Hey YouTube, Do Yourself Junkie 369 and today is day 88 of our RV10 build. I'm still working on the tail kit. I left off on page 12, step 8, where I'm drilling the J channel stiffeners. I have a couple holes on this one to do and then all of the one here on the number one side or the left hand side. So I'll get to doing that and then we'll just go on from there. Still slowly working through my garage and cleaning it up. The J channel stiffeners, I have a couple holes on this one to do and then all of the one here on the number one side or the left hand side. So I'll get to doing that and then we'll just go on from there. Still slowly working through my garage and cleaning it up. Picking on that, and at some point, I'm going to run out of space when that thing gets here. That's a huge box, or boxes, it's probably two boxes. Um, other than that, there's a couple tools that I have to buy that I want to pick up. Mainly, I want to get the huge rivets bucking bar that can be used for back riveting and everything so it looks better, much nicer, not dimpled. And I need to pick up some torque stripe. I'll go into what that is in a separate video probably. And I want a better tool for rolling over the edge where the seams are. Uh, the one I have is more for creating flanges around lightning holes like this. And I don't think it does a really good job creating what I need it to for overlapping skins. So, we're going to do that. Let's get to work. New thing you'll see me doing more often is wearing hearing protection. Uh, I have a separate video coming out explaining why that's a good idea. And uh, hopefully you follow suit.
Next two pieces come out of the same piece of angled aluminum, so make sure not to mess up your measurements.
Okay, so really I'm on section 10, page 15, step 4, which is deburring everything. But since there's so much here between the skins and the frame and everything else to deburr, I'm basically going to do a step uh, so like this. A minute ago on the video, I drilled out the hole for the aft tie down point. Now I'm going to deburr this part. And then step five is dimpling the 1006 bulkhead where it's going to get riveted together. So I'm just going to deburr that, do the dimples, set it aside. Especially on this, there's a lot of holes that get deburred later when you're attaching it to the front half of the fuselage. So, in this step five, none of this piece is getting dimpled. And then the edges are already deeper. So, I'm just going to set it aside. And then this was deburred except for the holes. And the four that are getting dimpled are up here at the top. So those are going to be the ones that get deburred. And then on this top piece, these four on either side will get deburred. And then the four in the middle as well.
it turns out that these flanges aren't supposed to get dimpled in this step. Um, both of the F1012 bulkheads, that's supposed to occur on the next page on step four. But I'm going to go ahead and since I already dimpled one, I'll dimple the other. Just got to make sure these single hole tabs up here that are under the laundrons, they don't get dimpled because the laundron is countersunk. But other than that, there's no harm in dimpling them now. Okay, so that's going to end this video. I left off on page 15, step 8. And as I noted earlier, if you didn't skip this part, this video started back in June and it's now like mid August. And so Basically, I started th this portion of the video, this portion of the build, and then took a huge long break. And what happened, if you guys are wondering, is nothing nefarious, nothing, uh, no bad health, nothing like that. Um, but as I've mentioned before in other videos, I am working on a master's degree. And so I had, like sometime back in June, I had a one-week class. And then I had about... four weeks, or no, eight weeks of homework that was due after the class was over. And then just about two weeks ago, I had another one week class. And now I just finished up my one week of homework and I have seven more weeks of homework left to do. So I'm busy doing that. Uh, because of that class, the, the second class I took, I missed Oshkosh and so hopefully you guys went and had an awesome time. I wish I could have gone. If I had gone, I would have had to, had to drive up there Friday night after class and then only spent Saturday and Sunday there and drove back Sunday evening and it would have been a heck of a drive to do. It, it's, it was just too far and too short of time for me to do it. Um, even though it, it was a bad idea, I still tried to convince a friend that we should go to Oshkosh this year. So hopefully I'll make it next year. Um, I don't think it'll be in this airplane, although I would like to fly up there in something. I, I don't think this will be finished. Um, even, even if I put in as much effort as I could, the wings aren't going to be here until November-ish, sometime October or November. 
And if I ordered the fuselage now, it wouldn't be here until probably February or March. So there's just no possible way to finish it. it unless the lead times all of a sudden were reduced greatly. And then also there's something coming up work related that I probably won't be able to really work on this in depth like I, I'd like to. So um, I'll have some time after I finish my homework uh, at the end of September until about January, but then I might be taking a break whether I want to or not. Um, but I'm okay with it. It's work related. I love my job and I, I can't wait. It, it's a great opportunity for me and I don't want to pass that up just because I'm working on an airplane. That's all I have. I need to get inside and work on some homework. Um, basically the class I'm doing right now is data mining. So I'm looking at uh, predicting uh, house sales based on historical data. And that's pretty cool. And then I have, I have to do two things for homework. And that's one that was like given to me. And then the other one's kind of like my choice. And I haven't figured out what I want to do it on. Uh, whatever it is, I have to have a good amount of data available so that I can run test sets and then, or so I can run training sets and then test sets based on data that's available. So I have to have enough data to do that. Um, other than that, that's all I've got. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, sorry it took so long for this one to get out there. I was trying to put out one a week. And that worked up until I hit my uh, school, which takes priority over pretty much everything else besides work. Um, if you did like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, leave a comment if you want to. I'll try to get back to you. There are some comments on other videos I need to respond to still. Um, a couple of them I haven't responded to just because I don't know what to say. Uh, there, there was some weird, weird stuff put on some of the other videos. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing. And if you're going to purchase a Vans aircraft, my builder's number is down in the description, along with a build log that you can steal and adapt for yourselves. If you want to see where I am currently, the build log is the most up-to-date thing I have since I update it every day after I work on the plane. And... Um, so if you're going to build your own, got sidetracked there, make sure, you, or please think about using my builder's numbers. Uh, Vans will give me a hundred bucks, which I will put towards currently my wing kit and paying that off. So it really helped me out. And thanks, uh, think about subscribing, as I said, no matter what, that way it, it helps out my metrics on YouTube. And... Thanks for watching.